All right, so let us have a start with some vectors. Here is my whiteboard. All right. So with vectors, we know that you can generally write it as a column vector of elements. So it could be X and Y. It could be X, Y, Z, if it's a three-dimensional vector, or you could have longer vectors. Most often, absolutely most often, they'll be written vertically. You might sometimes find them written horizontally like that. That is also a vector. It is also acceptable. However, it is definitely less common. All right. So this is what we're going to be focusing on. And it's all well and good to be able to identify a vector, not to write something down. The question is, what is a vector? Because it doesn't matter if we can do all our fancy stuff, if we don't actually know what we're doing, then it's completely pointless. You're essentially just a mindless monkey. So what is a vector? A vector is a quantity that has magnitude and direction. So that's very nice. What does it mean? So if I give you, for example, let's say you're traveling in a car and in this car, they say, how fast are you going? I'm traveling at 60 Ks an hour because I am a law abiding citizen. You'll be like, okay, that's nice. But you could be traveling in 60 k's an hour speed in any direction. And that means you could be traveling south, north, east, west, any way in between, it doesn't matter. That gives a whole bunch of different options of where you could actually be traveling to. So the reason that vectors are important is because not only do they have a magnitude of the 60 k's an hour, but they also have a direction which pinpoints to one exact point of where you have to be. All right. So we can generally work with vectors on a Cartesian plane. And we need to also make sure that we take note of notation. Just like in matrices, there was some notation that I had to tell you about and that we used. Vectors, there's a little bit more notation that we have to start dealing with. So in a textbook, you will find a couple of definitions, not a couple of definitions, a couple of notations for vectors. So you will find capital letters and then an arrow. Or you might find it like this. This is very bad notation, just to let you know. You will see that one. These are not equal, by the way. Um, and then you might see this. I wonder if I can actually type this. Hmm. No. Can't make it bold or anything. All right, then what I'm going to do So then you have an A, but you have like a bold A. So I'm going to try and make this a little bit thicker. And by thicker, I don't mean stupider, just in case there was anyone wondering. All right, the bold move to try and color this in to be a bold letter, but I think we're managing. All right, 
So in the textbooks, you'll find that you have bold letters. These also represent vectors. However, as you can see with my wonderful attempt at creating a bold letter, we generally don't do this in handwriting. So in handwriting to signify a vector, you just do a normal letter and put a line underneath it. So the most common ones that you'll see, you'll see this, you'll see this, and you'll handwrite this. Now, what do these mean? Well, a vector, since it has magnitude and direction, needs to have an arrow on it because that signifies a direction. The question of why don't we make it a different color? Because we generally only write in one color, but essentially you could make it a different color. This is just a convention because if you are on the lower side of life and unfortunately don't maybe happen to have different colors, then it's easier to just do it like this. So let us have a look on the Cartesian plane. There's my Cartesian plane, there's my X, there's my Y. Now, if I give you the vector two, one, these are always set up in the form X, Y. And they work just as the same with a positive and negative value. So this means I'm going two in the positive X direction from zero. I go one, two, and then I'm gonna go one positive up in the Y direction, one. And I'm going to change color. And this over there is my vector. So this vector over here, it's important to remember, A, there is only one direction that this vector can go in because that's the whole point of the vector, as I've said. It is also important to note that I started at the origin being zero, zero. What happens if I start, for example, here? Right? And I'm gonna call this point minus six and three, say, for example. Now, if I go two across and I go one up and I create another vector over there, uh, changing to blue, There's my other vector. Question is, is this blue vector the same or different compared to the purple vector? So is it the same or is it different? There are two questions we need to have a look at. Is the magnitude the same? Is I say two questions, three questions. So three questions, is the magnitude the same? Is the direction the same? And by direction, you can essentially also look at gradients. Roughly, positive to negative or whatever. And is the starting point the same? So, is the magnitude of these two vectors the same? Being, is the size of them the same? If 
if you're saying yes, it is the correct answer. Is the direction of them the same? Or you can even tilt your head and try and see, are both of them going in the same direction? Well, both of them went two across and one up. It's the same direction. Are they from the same starting point? No, quite clearly they are not. And I specifically said it like that. So therefore, are those vectors the same? Let's write the big question. Are the vectors the same? And the correct answer is, since we have a no to the starting point, unfortunately, these vectors are the same. <laughs> what? You misled me. How can they be the same? They aren't from the same starting point. They can't be the same. Well, actually, they can be the same because Think back to the definition of a vector that I gave you. It is a vector with the same magnitude, in other words, the size of it, and the same direction. I did not say from the same point. Vectors can move in the Cartesian plane. So it doesn't matter where these vectors start as long as they are have the same length, and they are in the same direction. If so, the vectors are the same. And we'll get to a little bit later about how you might have vectors that are in the same direction, but longer because they're multiplied by a scale factor, just as we did the scale factor multiplying with matrices. Because I know this is a little weird, the fact that you have two clearly separate items that are actually exactly the same thing. All right. Now, if I give you, for example, this blue vector, and this blue vector is equivalently to one, just as the purple vector is, what happens if we kind of change the direction in the sense of going backwards. So let's create another vector. So, yeah, why not? Let's use green this time. All right, we're starting at two. We're gonna go across one, across one, and we're gonna go up one. And our vector is now going this way. How can we name that vector? Well, you always start at the end without the arrowhead and go towards the arrowhead because that's the whole point of an arrowhead. So, Akil, you say, how are the magnitudes the same? The magnitudes are the same because essentially you go across the same amount and you go up the same amount on both of these. Both of them went two to the right and one up. All right, so this vector could be labeled as minus two, minus one. Why? Because you are going two in the x direction to the left, to the left is negative, and you're going one down, which is also negative in the y, therefore it's minus two minus one. But even more interestingly, we can see that this is exactly this vector, but backwards. And that is why it is exactly the negative of this original vector that we had. So if I 
for example, name these. So let me just go back to blue. So if I call this one A, B, for example, I can state that A, B, vector A, B, and this is why, specifically why we put the arrow above it, because we're starting at A and going to B is equal to minus B, A. And B, A, we have our arrow there, because if we start at B and go back to A, this is completely equivalent of my green vector. Just remember the vector can move anywhere on the Cartesian plane. So that is why it is very important to know the direction because that will either make it positive or negative, completely different items. So these look, look similar. They are not the same because direction is different. All right, now in this vector section, we're going to be looking at our adding and subtraction, our multiplying by scalars, and a whole bunch of things. None of that will make sense unless you guys are sure that you have this basic idea of what a vector is, what we're doing with it, can we move it around the plane, what vector equals what vector, what do we need, how do we name it?